I think there are two, two obvious types of it. If we think of for-profit entrepreneurship, it's fundamentally about um, returning a, a, uh, uh, the benefits of, 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 of creating a new venture or a new endeavour or a new organisation and, and returning it to specifically defined stakeholders, primarily, uh, for their own benefit. That's the for-profit case. So I think there are two types that qualify as, as what you might call social entrepreneurship. In both cases, they're trying to, to, to benefit, the stakeholders that they're benefiting are not necessarily those who run, run the business. Normally in the mainstream, you run the business, you own shares in it, you invest in it, etc. Your stake in it is, is, is a direct representation or a direct line to the profits you get out of it. The essence of social entrepreneurship is you're doing this thing for the benefit of somebody other than yourself. I think that often that's so simple to say, but it often gets forgotten in all the convoluted stuff about. So, so the, the doers of the venture are not its main beneficiaries. That's the essence of social entrepreneurship, which to me gives two things about doing it. So the first of these is where where you actually you 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 it, it's the, the very nature of how you run the business. Are you going to be innovative, entrepreneurial, and using all of those, those, those skills that are involved in a new venture? Or are you going to be run it this, an old-fashioned, very staid way? So it's social, you can have a socially entrepreneurial venture in terms of the way of its governance and the way that it's run, etc. Um, so you can have an old, a classic, the classic example is where you've got a foundation or a benefit, a, 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 a um, uh, a philanthropic organisation. Most of them are run very boringly on old-fashioned lines and they're not run dynamically and they only give money to, to the standard sort of things that they've always given it to. They're not very entrepreneurial in seeking good beneficiaries so a really good social entrepreneurship organisation in that field would be one that was dynamic, it was entrepreneurial, it was innovative in its approaches. And so the way the business itself is run um, is, is, is that's where the entrepreneurship comes in, almost a governance and management type issue. The other category altogether is simply where you run the business as though it was exactly in exactly the same way as you'd run a mainstream business, but then once it's made its money, you give it to whoever you give it to. So I'll give you a good example of that. There is a guy, a guy in Australia who runs a business called Breakout Printing, and it, who he wants to socially benefit is really hardcore prisoners who have done things like murder and, um, and particularly breaking and entering and robberies. There are no votes in this. Nobody loves them. No government is ever going to give a subsidy for it. Nothing. So what he does, he, but he runs a printing business and it's just called Breakout Printing and he runs it just like any other printing business. And he competes, you know, for, 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 for those sort of things. But 90% of the profits of it go to the rehabilitation of those hardcore prisoners. So there the entrepreneurship is totally in the, in the outcome, in the, in the end result. And his business is not particularly entrepreneurial. It's just a mainstream, me too, printing business, which has lower cost than its competitor to win a, win a case. So that's it. So I think the real essence of social entrepreneurship is, is, is who the beneficiaries are in many 